guys, I really didn't want to make this video to help avoid what will be a deja vu moment for many of us, essentially, but I went and did it again. I put all the quality of life tweaks at the end of the update guide, and only half of you watched it until that point. So that means half of you missed out on the best bits of this release, so with even more to showcase over the original overview of all this crap, I say we better do it again, right? But in a different order, of course, does not make each other insane. But what is insane is how the Lunar Fun cap still costs a red one in any celestial tab available. However, I digress. Out of the two new Moon Shroom crafts that feel utterly and completely random in the grand scheme of things, having clothing that protects from lunar spores while producing its own every two seconds is pretty cool. Especially when it means quote unquote infinite light on top of that. It also has a mechanic to spawn multiple defensive spores upon taking damage, so that's also nice. It's a fun cap though, so perishables will spoil. Just like how I'm here to spoil the stuffed nightcap crockpot dish here, because I don't freaking understand why it exists. Yeah, sure, puts anything that eats it to sleep for 20 seconds, but like... Why? I don't know, but let us talk the Moonstorm stuff. Yes, after years of existence, the event and many things surrounding it mine have been tweaked to be more efficient. After a Celestial Champion kill, Wagstaff will find a restrained static spot every first encounter. Moon Gleams have been made to spawn very quickly, but only if we are actively capturing them via Bugnet's mind. Glassy Charged Moon Rock can now be manually formed if we call down lightning within a Moonstorm via any End is Nigh readings or Otherwise, the Lunar Siphonator will no longer require multiple restrained statics as its first has been replaced with scrap. And finally, the Suspicious Boulder slash Celestial Orb have some fresh RNG rolls behind them having to do with both our level of friendship with Pearl and how many Celestial Altars we have socketed. Now, do you need any of that? No, but it is worth a note. As are all the ocean changes, and you have never heard me utter that sentence in all these years. To start, however, we have got broken shells stacking to 40 overall, shell bells themselves having a 30% chance to drop two broken shells per hammering, Pearl trading a bundle of eight shell bells per one message in a bottle over the original six, her fish food trade netting us three bundles of goop per one bottle on top of that, cookie cutters offering a 25% chance of dropping an additional shell per kill, rock jaws exploding into a few rocks, flint, and even barnacles now, seed shells becoming rather respectable at roughly 60 damage a toss, and finally, Pearl's sawhorse being able to turn stacks of logs in the boards instantly. Not bad. And to think we're not even halfway done, folks. Not when Wagstaff's got some new toys for us. First up, though, any unread blueprint from his junk set piece has a better chance to drop over already learned ones, so enjoy that. Along the way, however, you will likely encounter the Elastis Spacer blueprint, which, to my surprise, has remained quite expensive throughout this update's release. But wherever the case, it functions all the same in creating big, quote unquote, infinite storage chests for both normal and scaled variants, so do with that as you please. But here's what has changed very, very recently. Destroyed chests. When big chests get hammered and or deconstructed, they become a broken down chest that can be rummaged through for its individual loot or repaired via what you see here. And yup, it's a thing. But only if you have like thousands upon thousands of items in each. But you know what else is a thing? Our last major segment of the day, the acid rain tweaks. As you can see, we can now have the ability to turn it all off completely, but come on now, where's the fun in that? Especially when we've got a brand new, non-end game solution to the stuff in slimy selves. They will not only prevent any acid rain damage for half a day, but also deter any slurtles looking to pillage your inventory, so be aware of that. Also know that you can run and hide from the rain entirely by chilling in the Lunar Grotto or Ancient Archives, as no bit of acid rain will fall in either. To continue though, acid rain itself will now impact more of the caves and its various mobs, like how mush trees will drop spoiled mushrooms the longer they are under the effects of the stuff, how having about 10 niter on your person will call forth acid bat waves no matter where you are in the caves, with the whole warning system and everything. But most intriguing of all will be the new mob modifiers. In short, some mobs, like Clockworks and Bunnymen, get weaker and take more damage in the rain, while creatures like Tentacles only get stronger and take less damage even. But then we get stuff like Depworms here that go berserk and do both of those things really, so it's a whole mess of tweaks the mobs down under, as we can expect stronger spiders but weaker slew monkeys, weak tree guardians but stronger hutches, so on and so forth. For now though, let us end yet another 
another update guide with a lightning round. Scaled furnaces are essentially trash cans, so make do as you wish. Embalming spritz with their 75 uses total. Lock plant resources into their current states to prevent harvest, fires, digging, and further growth, of course. Lure plants will no longer block the likes of Fuel Weaver, Toadstool, and other big bads, so rip a ton of boss methods out there. Miasma spreads faster upon a rift's initial generation, so get there quick to burn it away. Rifts themselves have new markers. Lunar Hail can also be turned on and off at will now. Rot will wash away in the rain after about 30 seconds. The Scrappy Werepig's Horizon Expandinator can be deconstructed to your liking. We can slip on Pangol colonies and frozen ponds now. Using a fire staff is a secondary action now to prevent any misclicks. The charred remains of Dragonfly's previous victims are now hammerable. The pig and merm lovers can be found most anywhere in the caves after today. Odd skeletons are guaranteed to form if we have the black heart and the ancient key nearby while at the ancient gateway. Scrap walls are available straight from the get-go. Creature talk will now fill up our chat histories unless we turn it off in the settings. Any inventory storages can be opened from within our inventory, but only when we are stationary. Down and Melbatross feathers stack to 20. Guardian horns stack to 10. The Frostjaw family exists in full now for whatever reason. And finally, controller users receive some major love with updates to aiming, teleportation, item switching, and more good stuff. But to be quite honest with you everyone, even that wasn't everything. But there you have it. Another run through every single major quality of life tweak within the Scrappy Scavengers update in an effort to just get the information out there for all to know. Mostly because everyone's still going nuts over the base building and the pick stuff, while I believe the true treasure lies right here. But still, I hope these videos have helped. Let me know if you want a deeper dive in all that acid rain nonsense, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye bye.